If you own any kind of electronic device at home, you should know that it is best to keep that device running at minimal temperatures for many reasons, like thermal throttling and silicon degradation. Pretty much every device manufacturer in the world knows about these, and will do their best to keep your phones and computers properly cooled. Welcome back everyone to another episode in our 2021 Laptop Buyer's Guide series. Today, we will be talking about how laptop airflow works in terms of design as well as what benefits can an elevated work surface and external cooling fans provide to your laptop. Before we begin, a quick reminder for everyone to click on the subscribe button. It's free and it really helps what we're doing, and while you're at it, give us a like because it keeps us motivated to make more content like these. Alright, let's start with what's probably the bread and butter of this video, laptop design. Now good airflow is important to any machine, but more so laptops as by design, they are made to be compact and portable. Now for most office laptops, they come with a design like this. The way this design works is that colder air from the outside gets sucked into the laptop and into the components, whereas the heat generated by the laptop's components are blown out of the laptop by a fan. This is one of the more common airflow design, especially for most office laptops, MacBooks included by the way. And for the most part, it's more than efficient for these types of laptops, where the users are not expected to perform resource demanding tasks. With that said, there are laptops that have different way of conducting airflow, and that is with heat pipes. Now, heat pipes are normally used in gaming laptops, as the components used in gaming laptops produce a lot of heat. So the heat pipes are required to ensure that your laptop doesn't rival the heat coming from the roof of your car after leaving it parked under the sun for one afternoon. Well, how does it work? Well, it's a bit more complicated than the former method, but to keep it simple, heat gets absorbed from key components like the CPU and the GPU, then the heat gets exchanged with cold air going through a process called heat transfer, then the remaining heat gets dispersed outside the laptop. If you are interested in what this looks like, we will leave a video in the description showcasing what this process looks like in the simulation. Now that we talked about laptop design, let's go over external cooling solutions. External cooling solutions include cooling pads, vacuum coolers, and a stand to elevate your laptop. Cooling pad or cooling fans are one of the most common and most popular among these external devices. The principle behind them is simple. The pad takes in cool air from under and blows it right into your laptop. Since the pad is usually a porous surface and there's constant airflow created by the fans, there should be much less of a heat trapping effect. This in theory should help keep your laptop a few degrees cooler. The same concept is used with the stand just without the fan. Lastly, vacuum coolers. Basically, they get positioned around the area where heat exits the device, and they help suck the hot air out of the system. Well, that covers external cooling method. Now let's go over some internal ones. Namely, cheap thermal paste, expensive thermal paste, and liquid metal. What are they, and how they go against each other? Now, thermal paste is basically a superconductive paste which is used to fill the micro gaps on the surface between the CPU or GPU and the heat sink. Since air is an insulator, it reduces the ability for heat to transfer efficiently between the CPU or GPU and its heat sink. There are a few different types of thermal paste, silicon based, ceramic based, and metal based. Metal is the most effective one out of the three, however it is also electrically conductive, which means that if too much of it is applied, its excess would come into contact with the motherboard and cause short circuiting. Liquid metal works the same way as a metallic thermal paste would, but the difference lies in its composition and properties. Here's a bit of science knowledge for you. According to Tech Walls, the main component of liquid metal is gallium. It's a soft metal with a low melting point and a high boiling point. When combined with other components of metals like indium, the melting point falls to negative 19 Celsius, which is why the compound remains a metal at room temperatures. There's little to no evaporation due to it having a relatively high boiling point of 1300 Celsius. Now that we have all the information, how do they fare against each other? TLDR, liquid metal is the best among these three components, but to be frank, it's just overkill. And for the record, liquid metal goes up to 73 watts per meter kelvin in comparison to thermal paste which goes up to somewhere between 5 to 12 watts per meter kelvin. Normal laptops and even most gaming laptops don't need that much heat conduction. As for thermal paste, you can probably guess that the more expensive the thermal paste is, the better it is. But again, for conventional use, the cheaper alternative is probably just fine, even if it doesn't provide the most optimal of temperatures. There's an interesting video made by Benchmark, where they compare the difference between a cheap thermal paste and expensive thermal paste and... Toothpaste? 
The video will be in the description for you to check out. And no, we don't recommend you using Colgate as a replacement for thermal paste. And that's all there is for today. If you've learned something from this video, leave a like, subscribe for more content like this, and leave a comment on what you think about the video. For a deep dive on what we think makes a good laptop, you can check out the rest of our 2021 Laptop Buyer's Guide series. Stay home, stay safe, and we will see you in the next video.